Hey everybody, hope you guys are healthy and safe. So this is the Huawei Mate 60 Pro. It would not be an overstatement to call this the most controversial phone of the year and perhaps the most important phone of the year too because this is not just a phone right now. This thing is in the middle of a geopolitical storm between the US and China right now and it's probably going to reignite the ongoing cold war between the two countries. I'm not making any of this up. If you Google this phone right now, you will see that major business newspapers, they're all writing about the US government is actively looking into this phone. So I was able to get my hands on this, not through Huawei. I was able to get it via Trinity Electronics in Hong Kong. You know, if you follow my work or watch my channel, you will probably have heard of them. They're basically the best phone importer on earth. Trinity Electronics get phones before anybody else. So right now, if you want to buy this phone, Trinity is one of the very few places that you can buy it. And I believe they do ship overseas too. So if you are interested, I'll have a link to their website below. You might want to check it out. So why is this phone causing so much drama? I'm going to take the next minute or two to talk about the overall history. If you don't care about that, or if you already know the whole backstory, then feel free to skip to here where I will then just move on to the next section, which is overall hardware performance and look at the cameras and all that. So basically Huawei, you know, up until what, like four years ago, they were one of the best Android smartphone makers. Their phones were getting great reviews and Huawei made their own chips called the Kirin SOCs. The Kirin chips were actually a little bit ahead of Apple's A chip and Qualcomm Snapdragon chips in terms of um, pushing new nanometer architecture. So in silicon, the smaller the, the number, you know, like seven nanometer, five nanometer, three nanometer, the smaller the number, the better, more powerful the chip is. And Huawei, this is back in like 2018, 2019, they were always a few months ahead of whatever Apple or Qualcomm were doing. Like they were the first to do seven nanometer, so it would not be an exaggeration to say that Huawei's Kirin chip was one of the leaders in silicon technology. That changed when the US government applied sanctions on Huawei. The sanctions first started with just the Google ban when Huawei phones couldn't run Google apps. And later the US government cut off Huawei's access to make chips. Now, Huawei's uh, Kirin chips before the sanction was made by Taiwan's TSMC, which is the same silicon maker that makes Apple's uh, A chips. They're basically like one of the few factories on earth to have the technology to make bleeding edge silicon. The US government basically told TSMC, you cannot make chips for Huawei anymore, we're banning you guys. So if you're wondering why the US government can stop a Taiwan chip making company from working with Huawei, well, number one, it's because that chip making company apparently uses some type of American technology, like American patents, so the US government has to say, and then number two, Taiwan and the US are tight allies and Taiwan doesn't like China anyway. So of course Taiwan would agree. So then ever since the US government basically cut off Huawei's ability to make its own chips, Huawei has had to buy chips from Qualcomm. And then I guess the US government also told Qualcomm they can't sell Huawei the best chips. So Huawei was always using like a Snapdragon chip that was one year older than everybody else and also could not get 5G. So basically the US government essentially crippled Huawei smartphones from a software standpoint, no Google apps, and also from a hardware standpoint. They had to use Qualcomm's older, lesser chips. But all that changed a couple of weeks ago when Huawei suddenly released the Mate 60 Pro powered by its own silicon, the Kirin 9000S. This is the first time Huawei has released its own chip in like three years. And because the US government had done so much work to prevent Huawei from making chips, the fact that Huawei somehow was able to do it has everyone kind of in shock. So what this means now is the US government is probably going to scrutinize Huawei a little bit more, and then that may spread to other Chinese companies, and then there may be retaliation Basically, there's going to be more drama, more beef, and it sucks for people like me who just want good consumer tech. I just want a good smartphone. I don't want to deal with politics, but unfortunately, politics, it's all that's like been talked about right now. Now, I'm pretty sure my comments are going to have a lot of people pushing agendas from both sides, pro-China and pro-US. I ask you, please don't do that on my YouTube feed, okay? Anyway, let's uh, talk about the hardware of this phone. So the Kirin 9000 is built on 7 nanometer architecture. So it's a little bit behind what um, Apple is using for the A15 Bionic or Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. So that goes to imply that um, the Kirin 9000S is a little bit behind in terms of raw power. And indeed, when I ran a Geekbench score, the numbers are a little bit lower than the iPhone 14 Pro Max. 
But surprisingly, the Kirin 9000S seems to be able to connect to 5G networks. I say seems to be because when I put my 5G SIM card in this phone, it actually doesn't pop up a 5G logo. Like it doesn't say what network I'm connected to. But then I ran some speed tests and the speed tests actually beat the iPhone 14 Pro Max and the Galaxy Z Fold 5. So definitely you're getting 5G speeds with the Huawei Mate 60 Pro. And uh, overall, the chip seems pretty snappy enough, even though it's not gonna beat the A15 Bionic here in terms of raw power. Looking at the other parts of the hardware, you have a 6.8 inch OLED display, 120 hertz. And I love this uh, glass design with a three-tone finish. Circular camera module, I, I think this phone looks really good in the hand. It weighs 212 grams, so it's not the lightest phone around, but not too heavy. And this is 8.1 millimeters, so it's a little bit thick too. You'll notice around the front there are three hole punches. So it houses a 13 megapixel ultra wide selfie camera and a TOF sensor and a depth sensor. The TOF sensor time of flight is to do a 3D map of your face. So it's basically Huawei's version of a real 3D face unlock. Around the back, you have a triple camera setup with a 50 megapixel main camera. This 50 megapixel main around the back, you have a triple camera setup with a 50 megapixel main camera. This main camera also has a variable aperture, just like in the Huawei P60 Pro and the Mate 50 Pro. I believe it's the exact same camera actually. The aperture can switch between f1.4 and f4. So that means that you shoot it with f1.4, you get shallower depth of field and you pull in a little bit more light. The main camera is really good, but to be honest, I think the star of the show is the 48 megapixel periscope zoom lens. This periscope zoom lens, it's the most versatile periscope zoom lens I've tested. It's a Tele macro lens. Basically, it shoots at 3.5 times zoom, about a focal length equivalent of 75 millimeter. So you get very nice portrait level framing with really strong bokeh. 3.5 times zoom has noticeably stronger bokeh than the 3X telephoto in the iPhone. But on top of that, this periscope zoom lens also can take macro shots. You can get much closer to a subject than any other phones that I've tested in recent years. So as a result, it's a very versatile lens. You can shoot 3.5 times portraits and get really strong depth of field, get really strong bokeh, or you can bring the camera all the way into something and get really fine detail. In fact, the bokeh of this 3.5X lens is so good, I find that you can grab some pretty respectable product shots with a smartphone. I mean, check this out. Like if you saw this, on a tech site, I don't think you would have complaints about how this look. And of course it helps I can take macro photography with the same lens. So I can get a shot of this USB-C port if I need. Like this is taken with a smartphone camera, man. And because the depth of field is real, that means I can also capture videos and get that same bokeh because this isn't artificial bokeh from a portrait mode. I mean, come on, man. This is really damn good for a smartphone video. I mean, look at the bokeh in the shot, and then look at the details in the shot. There's also a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera, f2.2 aperture. The ultra wide camera is fine, but I think ultimately the star of the show is that 3.5 times Taylor macro lens. It is the most versatile lens of any smartphone right now. Elsewhere, you have a 5,000 mAh battery inside that can be charged at 88 watt speeds with the included charger or 50 watt wireless speeds if you use Huawei's proprietary wireless charger. This one's also rated IP68 water and dust resistance. And the glass, it's not protected by Gorilla Glass, but instead it's protected by Huawei's like Kongnong Glass. I think it's like Huawei's version of Gorilla Glass. So this is the Huawei Mate 60 Pro. I love the look of this phone and I love that Tele macro camera. I wish the software could run Google Apps because if it could, I would definitely use this as my daily driver, but it cannot. So yeah, that's about it for this uh, quick hands-on with Mate 60 Pro, the most controversial and the most dramatic phone of the year. I hope you enjoyed this content. If you did, please consider subscribing to my channel. It will help me a lot. Thanks for watching.